polo would seem synonymous with the British Raj, but there's one player here who knows better. An ex-Indian army officer who told me that the Indians invented it long before we arrived. Colonel Sheikh now runs a restaurant, and over a hamburger there, he once told me that his Indian ancestors used a human head as the ball. Hello again. Hello, Colonel. Is the field playing well today? Oh, it's playing beautifully. And the team, are they playing together? Oh, yes, they're all together. How it's many chuckers? It is, it looks like it. Mm -hmm. How many chuckers have you had? I've had two. We'll play six in all today. One of these days, I'd love to play. Do you think oh, I could? I would love to have you, yes. A young man like you ought to be in a game like this. Do you think I've got a good seat? All right, for a big enough. But wrong costume. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the uh, British United Services Club Friday. Okay. And we'll sing okay. some old war songs. We will. Splendid. Bye. Okay, all the best, Colonel. In Los Angeles, the car is another limb of the body and often needs hospitalization. In the San Fernando Valley, there are lots of auto repair shops. I'm popping into one run by my friend Scotty. Like Colonel Sheikh, he's a British United Services Club member, and he also served with the Indian Army. On the northwest frontier, he fought alongside the Gurkhas. But when the Labour Party came to power in 1945, Scotty, or to give him his full title, Colonel Ian Goldstone, MC, DSO twice, saw no place for a dedicated Empire Service officer in a welfare state and so he emigrated to America, the last frontier. Scotty's repair shop grosses $750,000 a year. Colonel, I actually came here today because uh, my car is giving me a bit of trouble. Uh, the muffler's all, all bad. Mm -hmm. And the uh, trouble is that I have, I don't have a British car, or in fact a German car. I have what's called a Torinado Oldsmobile. Do you think that's any good? Uh, no, I would I'd, uh, have to say this. I'll pass on that one, whatever's wrong with it. Is that bad? Well, in the first place, uh, we don't work on American cars, as far as mechanics are concerned. And uh, in the second place, it is not a good car to work on. How much do you think it's worth? This one right here? Yeah, with the bicycle on the back. Uh, $1,500, maybe? Oh, Lord, I just spent 3000 on repairs. That's what I said. The car is not that good a car. Well, thank you, Colonel. You're welcome. It's 4 o'clock at KPFK in Los Angeles. Stay tuned now for Ruth's Kitchen with Ruth Zioni. As you know, I'm a jack of many trades. And here's another job. The host person is Ruth, one of my strenuous exercise pals from the YMCA. The other guest is Louis L'Amour, author of best-selling Western novels. On my left, I have Ian Whitcomb, the British pop rock expert who is going to tell us about hamburgers. Ian and I are friends. I want you to know that right now because by the end of this show, we may no longer be, be speaking. Okay, Ian, tell me where you think the greatest hamburgers are. But first, tell me, can you get a good hamburger in London? Uh, I don't think so. Not, not terribly good, no. Pretty rough on the whole, in fact. I ought to say before I begin, but I told a friend of mine, an American friend, that I was doing this, uh, this particular job, and he said to me, you English, you come here and you've got no taste in food, you're tone deaf too to music, and you come and tell us about hamburgers. So uh, I went to my first burger place somewhat um, apprehensive, but the first turned out to be the best because it was Fat Jack's. Fat Jack. Fat Jack. All right, where's Fat Jack it's located? On, uh, is it Kahueng no, Kahuenga? No, Kahuenga. 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 Ian, this is, is English it? we're speaking yeah. here. Yeah, well, it's Ventura. Oh, it's, is it on Ventura or is it on Kahuenga? Ventura and something else Spanish -y. <laughs> Anyway, I'll leave it you to another way. Oh, No, I went, I went there and, and I liked it a lot. I ought to have known that Kahuenga is actually pronounced Kahuenga. After all, I've done all this research. I mean, I know it's a red Indian name. They lived here, you know, for centuries in the San Fernando Valley, eating crushed acorns, poor devils. The valley was desert, worthless land, dust bowl, but then came progressive white businessmen, and they eventually piped in water from northern rivers, and lotus land blossomed. Daily trainloads of eager settlers were brought to this now fertile valley, this, this heaven in L.A., their stomachs primed by meals served en route at the Fred Harvey Railroad dining room chains. Now, 
that's another interesting story. You see, Fred started his first dining room in 1885. Uh, no, wait a minute, it was 75. No, no, wait a minute, no, it was 1880. I should know. I better check this at the Huntingdon. Yes. Oh, Ian, you're just so yes. charming. I don't know what to do. I'm going to break your heart. Oh dear. That's the 75 cent special in 1888. Oh, Fred Harvey's. Harvey's. They're oh. the railroad stops, weren't they? Yes. The, yeah. Would you like to tell us what was what it was comprised of? <laughs> the 75 cent special had. We will we, we will alternate. Puree of tomato soup, stuffed white fish. A stuffed white fish with potatoes. Choice of mutton, beef, or pork or turkey. No, small turnovers. Uh, sorry. Small turnovers of chicken. Shrimp salad. Choice of rice pudding, apple or cranberry pie. Assorted fruits. Fancy cakes. Ice cream. Then eat them in Roquefort cheese. With crackers. And French coffee. That was all for 75 cents. When was this? In the 1880s. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, what, 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 yes, <laughs> definitely. And on that nostalgic note, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Lamore, and <laughs> you, finished. Ian. Yes, we are. Oh, we're going to. We are, nice. We're going to close with a song from I one of Ian's albums. What's it called? Uh, you chose oh, Down it. on the Farm, <laughs> because it mentions unchaining the gorgonzola cheese. Right. Because it's so full of maggots that it might, if you, you know, has to be chained up. And... I want to remind you all that I will see you in two weeks. The show will be on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and I'll look forward to hearing from you in the meantime, and I hope you have a great, happy 4th of July. Cows and sheep and horses, meals with supper courses, down on the farm, peaceful and calm. Call who wakes me and a quarter to five. Make me shudder, get my milk straight from the udder And when days are rending, golden skies are blending Down on the farm, peaceful and calm Down, down we go, down to downtown, away from Lotus Land Down into hard reality, where people actually work You see, I'm still an alien I haven't yet been finally cleared to live here by the immigration authorities I've been waiting for more than a year, and I really would like to see the old family again. So my lawyer is pleading with immigration to try and get me two months in England, what they call parole. If he can't get this, nobody can, because he's the best. He's Sidney Kaplan. Well, we've already submitted your fingerprints and certain applications, and before they can give you the parole, they want to make sure that you are clear and that there's nothing in your background that would prevent them from giving you the visa or permanent residence when you re-enter the United States. Sydney, when I came to you a year and a half ago, did you think then I had a case? Well, I thought you had a case, but uh, there were a lot of uh, proof, a great deal of proof that we had to put together, and we needed affidavits from people in the entertainment field who knew about your musical writing and your musical background. And it took quite a while to get all these uh, documentary items. Uh, we submitted letters, affidavits, and other background material, and things that you actually did, including the book that you wrote, After the Ball, right. and the records uh, that, and the music that you wrote. You were very clever to get me that third preference. Very good. I mean, that would be the, the kind of thing, the same thing that an actor of the quality of Sir Lawrence Olivier would get. Is that right? That's right. So well, you third made me a star. preference is available for certain people with unusual and exceptional ability in the arts and sciences, and certain uh, professional people who are on a special list, such as medical doctors and nurses, pharmacists, uh, generally in the medical field. But others of exceptional ability in the arts and science can qualify. And uh, we submitted all your background material, and the U.S. Department of Labor ruled in your favor. Do you think it would be true to say that the Statue of Liberty is now saying, bring us your rich, not bring us your poor? We did bring in the Vietnamese refugees. So the law is fair in that sense, but it is uh, geared now to bring in the highly skilled and the wealthy.